Shalom, first of all, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, and double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone, who were well. Peace and salutation to all sins, Shachim. They wrote there, of course, lifting up the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in all truth and sincerity. Yahweh, of course, is the true, almighty, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, who the world even calls God, and His only begotten Son's name. Is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Bahashem meaning in the name, and Rechav meaning spirit, and Kodash is holy, which I said in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the ancient language as a, that has been slach, returned onto the Hebrew Israelites, which the Hebrew Israelites consist of so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And since our sea has been scattered amongst the heathen, some of our people look like the heathen throughout the different nations where we've been course scattered too but of course their spirit bear witness with our spirit meaning the spirit of the scriptures that they're israelites simple as that disclaimer we are the hebrew israelites we are not connected with any black denomination group nor are we a black extremist group we are the hebrew israelites by blood the people who are allotted to salvation the kingdom the glory to covenants which is in the scriptures of course it can be proven time and time again through of course the proof which is the testimony of Yahweh Shem Yahshai which is in the scriptures through the relics through the word which the word is the living word water from the brother Mafa Great Millstone Plain Tables Camp located here in Great uh, Babylon, which is a uh, America in the city of Philadelphia, here, of course, from the camp, Great Millstone Plain Tables Camp. All right, so uh, Slock, if I'm rambling a bit, just uh, taking the time to just speak in the spirit, in which I have this article, and I'm just gonna cover it here. And it says, a man killed his wife to be. With his grinder boyfriend. But his iPhone health app. Gave. His plot away. Which that's of course dealing with his plan. Okay. Now going into the article. It says here. She has been strangled with a Tesco bag. For life. Or strangled. Yeah strangled with a Tesco bag. It says. Mitesh Patel told Polis. He had just gone out to buy pizza the night of May 14th when he came home to find his wife, Jessica, lying motionless in his living room. The plastic reusable shopping bag named for the local grocery store, which that is Tesco. It's uh, in UK, right? It says, was deformed and dotted with Jessica's saliva. Duct tape was wrapped around her wrists and her ankles and covered her mouth. And at first, Patel told the emergency operator he didn't know if she was alive or dead. It says, Ohio. He began on an emergency call for their home in Middleborough, England, which was obtained by the Washington Post. I think we've been burgled and my wife has been attacked. The host he said, has been ransacked, clothes were thrown all over the floor in the couple's bedroom, the contents of every drawer and every shelf, papers, purses, makeup, appeared strewn haphardly, or haphardly, slach, or haphardly, or slach, across the room, but the police and the paramedics arrived the whole scene struck them as bizarre they found no evidence of forced entry patel's home was equipped with home security ca cameras yet oddly they found the hard drive tucked into his food suitcase underneath the bed and learned later that the tape has been cut just minutes before they arrived in Patel's bedroom dresser, they found a single overturned photograph underneath the lining. It was Patel's. It was Patel and another man, in which you have it here. 
he had seemed like he was dealing with a woman. Like he may, of course, already was dealing with it, but you know, in this world, marriage. They, of course, uh, deem marriage is when you do the ceremony, the marital ceremony. You go to, of course, the government and enter that third party contract between the government and the two, which is the the, the so called husband and wife. Or in this day and age, you have it where you have men can get with men. And that can be honored by the government, which is under the wicked right now, right? Which um, government, I believe, means mind control. And you have it where, you know, women can get with women and be married. And that can be recognized as a partnership, In which that, of course, is against the scriptures. Now, you have it here. He actually, this particular man, I believe he is uh, from the nation of Elam or East Indians, which in the Hebrew is Ayalam, which means, or, or yeah, uh, Iwalam. Let me see. That's, uh, let, me, let me get it correct because uh, I, I, I can mix up between. Iwalam is forever and Ayalam is, is young, slock. So it says it was Patel and another man who police would learn was at the center of everything. So he was currently, he was dealing with a, a woman, but he had a lust, okay, a desire, a forbidden desire at that for an actual man, right? Which is Patel. He, he probably was living a double life, okay? It says the the man in the photograph was an Australian doctor, whom Patel met on Grinder, which is a, the dating app for gay men or homosexual men. It says his extramarital affairs with the men he met on the app perhaps was the worst kept secret, which I mentioned he's living a double life at the neighborhood pharmacy that he and Jessica owned. Co-workers would often find him strolling through the potential hookups behind the counter when Jessica wasn't in there. Jessica would find out eventually herself finding out love you X messages to the Australian doctor on his phone. That's, you know, the women, of course, sneaking you know, or snooping. And it says in the police set, two will find them all. So he got completely uh, exposed which, you know, we all uh, should know that the things that, of course, are done in the dark, you know, will be manifest, okay, in which you see that happening. And the Lord is not having mercy, all right, <laughs> on, well, really, you know, the Lord is, he's been, you know, the Lord is, is merciful, but he's also long-suffering. But he, of course, is bringing judgment for wickedness, okay? As you see, homosexuality, that, of course, is abomination in the eyes of the Lord. Which, we can clearly get that right now. This is the law, book of Leviticus 20:13. It says, if a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with woman, both them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Okay, so, you have it here. That's the law. So, the Lord, of course, is against homosexuality. All right, lesbianism and such, transsexual, all of them different immoral, immoral uh, acts, okay, sexually immoral acts, all right? You have it here. Um, another scripture, which uh, Leviticus 18 and 22, it says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind is abomination, because it's detestable, okay? It's something that is wicked, all right? And that's why, um, you know, ultimately have some judgment that was put out, which, uh, th I mean, the man is going to go to jail for the murder, but also, uh, you had, the woman got put to death, you know, not knowing, of course, how wicked this particular, uh, his particular, his woman, his wife's wife to be, or really, it's probably, his, it's definitely his wife because he already probably dealt with her, or I mean, he had sex with her. 
is under the eyes of the Lord. When a man and wife, of course, ha have sex, that is marriage, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, we're in a time of the end, okay? And judgment is going out because, um, let me see, I'm going to go to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. And I'm going to start here at the, the, uh, I'm going to start at, actually, Matthew 24, and I'm going to start at verse 32. It says, Now learn the parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Right? Is it's a sign, okay? Simple as that. So likewise ye, when ye... Shall see all things, all these things which Yahweh Shai gave mention in this chapter, different signs of his second coming, okay, which Yahweh Shai was here first, all right, 2,000 years ago, and he's coming back, all right, coming back for judgment on the wicked, all right, which includes, of course, the Edomites chiefly, but also the wicked, mean uh, of our people, two thirds of them, and of course, the rest of these nations, okay. Um, and of course he's bringing salvation all right by the way is so-called UFOs which are the, the chariots okay of of Israel all right going on it says here so likewise when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even at the doors verily I say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away because it's I I I, um, uh, as I will, um, all right, forever, you know, it's everlasting, the word, okay, it says, but, uh, that day, in that hour, knoweth no man, no, not in the angels, but, of heaven, but my father, which is Yahweh only, okay, but, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, which you have that right now, okay? Until the day of Noah entered the ark. And this ark, all right, protected Noah and eight souls, okay? Noah and his family, all right? His sons, he had, what, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And, of course, Noah had... Um, his wife and Shem Ham and uh, Japheth had, uh, was it, uh, their women too, okay, to produce, okay? So it says, anyway, going on, it says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the Son of Man be, all right? And that's how it's going to be. So, you know, you have it right now, all of this marriage and such that's going on, and you have it where it's even, you know, you have it just like back then. It was, uh, you know, you had all of this wickedness going on. All right, sodomy and such. That's happening right now. All right. So, you have it here. Going back to the article. It says, um, like you said, she's the leaseholder. Patel told his boyfriend in one message comparing his wife to a short-term renter and their relationship. According to live coverage on the trial in a local newspaper, Teasdale Live. One day that lease will expire. Okay. One Wednesday, Patel was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 30 years for killing his wife. So he could run off to Australia and start a new life with his grinder lover. Which this is, you know, he wanted to, of course, go off and... Into a what homosexual partnership? Okay, it says pro, uh, prosecutors say he planned pl uh, he planned to cash in two hundred million euros, which that's two hundred and two two twenty seven million in life insurance policy he's taken out on his wife, and he had been plotting to her her murder for more 
than five years. He had waited so long the prosecutors contended because he was hoping in the meantime she would become pregnant and gave birth to a baby whom Patel planned to raise with his boyfriend. In which we know, you know, look, you can't have any uh, thing fruitful from two men getting together. They can't have a ch child. So, you know, but they wanted children. These homosexuals, they want children and such. And, I mean, I don't know. It's crazy. It said, what are your thoughts if she goes earlier than you think? It says, Patel asked his boyfriend in a text message citing in court referring to the hypocritical death of his wife. Will you love it like your own? And it says in a reply, I believe, it says, I can love it. The doctor responded, referring to the hip hypothetical baby, as long as there isn't anyone else involved. It says, Jessica never got pregnant, but could have. At the time of her death, she had been in undergoing a, in a retro fertilization treatment when Patel took the stand. Prosecutors suggested that perhaps Patel had thought you have had eggs and embryos and you don't need just anymore. Uh, and it says, uh, no, it did not, Patel said. And Patel and, his, and Jessica had known each other since childhood. Prosecutors detained uh, our detailed slot uh, during the trial. The two of them grew up in the same Hindu community. All right, so you have, you know, them polluted by this homosexuality stuff. All right, going on, and that's Esau work. It says, um, and later reconnected as adults while they were studying at university in Leicester. Patel was Jessica's first boyfriend. So she probably was a virgin. A prosecutor said that in 2008, Patel asked her father for permission to marry her, and that's how things are supposed to go. All right. Um, that's how things were done in the ancient world. All right. So, um, I mean, you can read the rest of the story. I'm just going to get into this, uh, this, uh, these precepts, you know, we already 17 minutes. So, you know, so, uh, I'm just going to go into, uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha, the 16th chapter. All right. And go down to, uh, Verse um, 7, it says, He was not pacified and even pleased towards the old giant giants who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. Neither spared he the place of where Lot sojourned, but abhorred them for their pride. And you have that now. You know, this is, uh, if you read Revelation, was that 11 and 8? You know, America and... I mean, this is Sodom in Egypt, okay? But it's the whole world is under the uh, gross darkness under the so-called white man rule, okay? It says, He pitied not the people of perdition who were taken away in their sins, all right? And you have it where, you know, you had all the wicked people in Sodom and Gomorrah was doing all these sexually immoral acts, all right? And now you have it where the Lord is going to, he's bringing judgment now. He's bringing uh, fierce judgment coming, all right, very soon to this place as a whole, too, at a great scale, all right. Uh, I'm going to go on and read um, to uh, verse uh, 12. It says, as his mercy is great, so is his correction also. He judges a man according to his works. The sinner shall not escape with his spoils, and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated. All right. And I'm basically going to end off right there. All right. That, um, that of course, the Lord, he's bringing forth the, the correction via death. All right. To this world, to these people. All right. To these heathen. Okay. Because, I mean, this dude going to get put to death. You know, in jail. And you had another wicked woman definitely got put to death, a heathen. Anyway, I'm just going to close out. You know, hopefully you're edified. You know, slach if this is just a you know, short lesson. But just wanted to prophesy in the spirit. Shalom.